Hi, it's Kath. <laughs> it's Monday night <laughs> and it's January the 30th. Where did January go? Goodness only knows, but we're here. Jackie White says it's fine. So let's see who's watching all together. Jennifer, Jackie, hi Jackie, hi Deborah. Lizzie says that's better. She'll edit me. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> Sound is better now. Thank you. Jackie, um, Jackie Grant is here. Hi, Jackie. Sandra, Mary, lots of people um, already coming in. We've got over a hundred people already watching me make a fool of myself. No, 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 no. We'll skip over that bit. So we're here on a Monday night to make our, I always look the wrong way, to make our Mid-Month Madness pattern, which today is called Eden. And I called it Eden because Eden means the beginning of all things. Did you know that? I know it was the garden, you know, in Bible stories. Um, but Eden, the meaning of the word is the beginning of all things. And I thought the beginning of spring is a lovely time. We look forward to seeing the kingfishers later in the year. And um, yes, yeah, so this is Eden. She's a pie crisp cushion. If anybody saw my little video this morning, you'll know that um, the pie crust is made with hand stitching, but we don't need to do it with hand stitching. So tonight everything is going to be done on my sewing machine because I'm not going to waste time doing half a dozen hand stitches where I can go all the way around on the machine. That's for um, that's for slow stitching time, not for tonight. So um, we're not going to take long. There's a few other people coming in now, so that's lovely. We're not going to take too long, but I might not get it all finished. Um, as long as I can get the front bit finished tonight, if I don't do the back bit um, of this pie crusting, I call it, then um, I can always post it um, once I've finished it a bit later on. OK, so so there's our Kingfisher. Isn't the Kingfisher gorgeous? That's um, from Adrienne of Zippy Doodle Designs. You know, I find that really difficult to say, but <laughs> it's from Adrienne of Zippy Doodle Designs. And um, she's designed these all herself and had them printed on fabric and they are just gorgeous. So if you fancy doing that, nip over to Zippy Doodle Designs. Perhaps somebody, um, one of the admin team could put, could the, um, could put the, the link up for, for Adrienne. Uh, Adrienne, if you don't know, is Lizzie's uh, elder daughter and she's very, very talented, a bit like her mum really. Yeah, makes you sick, I know, I know, makes you sick. Um, but I thought that it'd be lovely to put the Kingfisher in the middle of this cushion and of course there's lots of other designs that she's got as well. So if you want to have a look for something for your cushion, pop over to have a look at Zippy Doodle Designs. So I'm going to turn the camera downwards so that you can look at my desk rather than me and um, we'll make a start because there's lots to do. So here we have the things that I've um, I've cut out for you and um, what I've started to do, the first thing that we have to do, I'm so sorry, my cat has been sat on my desk and I thought I'd got all the hairs off, but no. And I'll tell you a funny story, not about hairs in a minute, but about other things. Um, let's get started first. <laughs> so what I've started to, the first thing we have to do is I've taken my... Um, my square that's in the middle so i'm calling it my center panel now if you want to use something like this or fussy cut a, a piece of your own fabric then that would be great or just do a pretty square it doesn't matter um, you can do whatever you want to and this one's going to be embellished by the lace all the way around you can hardly see it on here really but it does have lace all the way around and it just makes a nice little frame there so what I've done is I've put quilters tape on to all four pieces, uh, all four sides, and you can see that I've still got the um, the paper backing on this one, because my vintage lace is only about half inch wide to its to its widest part. So I haven't put it right up to the edge there. I don't know whether you can see that. You can see it's not right up to the edge there. I've put it probably about well, a scant eighth of an inch away. So I get a little bit more sticking out once we've put our borders on. So um, I say to cut them at six inches because this is six inches. I just had a piece and it was about, I don't know, 13 inches or so. So I didn't measure it. I just cut it in half and cut it in half again. Um, then we peel the backing off and I'm going to put this one down again um about yeah scant 
a scant eighth of an inch. Don't go too far in if yours is a similar width because we need to be basting this. Um, well, you need to be basting it. I'm not going to, but you'd need to baste it on to make sure it's secure. And then we don't want the basting stitching showing outside um, on the, um, you know, on the seam. So I've said in the pattern to baste all around here. I'm not going to do it just for time's sake because one of the reasons I'm not going to do it is because um, these pieces aren't very big and I've got those taped down with um, quilters tape um, and also there's a little bit of the quilters tape showing so this will actually um, adhere a little bit to it and make it a little bit easier for me but if you want to baste then you go ahead and baste that's you know that's the safest way so then I've got the border pieces they go on next to make up the front so the border pieces I've got the two shorter pieces top and bottom and the longer pieces on the sides so I'm going to put these this is linen uh, natural linen so you can't tell either side but those if you've got um, right and wrong sides to your fabric that would go right side down so right side of the border to right side of your fabric underneath. I forgot to tell you, um, it says in the pattern anyway, that this I've already stabilised. This has got F220 on it. Um, I was looking today um, at, just as a little aside, I was looking today at the stabilisers on the Valiseline page. And I don't know whether anybody knows, um, or everybody knows, but even if one person doesn't, it helps, that the Valiseline website is a really good website if you're using Valiseline's project product rather because every product has got its own Facebook page uh, uh, no got its own its own website page I'll get my tongue around these words in a minute every Valiseline project product has got its own website page um, on the Valiseline website so it tells you what it's for when to use it how to adhere it what, whether it'll wash what degrees it'll wash up all that kind of thing so it's a really good guide so if you want to know a little bit more about it go on to the um, Valiseline website and um, and have a look at the products so what I'm going to do is to pop those down there so that's not stuck very well but I can manipulate it when I get to the machine and we're going to sew across that side and we're going to sew across that side because as we flip them back then we will get our borders top and bottom so I'm going to do this one first. I've got my quarter inch foot on, it's a quarter inch seam allowance, and I'm going to whiz down there. Don't worry if yours are a touch longer, as long as they're not any shorter, then we can trim this off at the end. We're going to trim it any, well, yes, we are going to trim it anyway, but we're going to square it off before we do that even so okay great view thank you thank you Wendy thank you Gemma that's great um, so what I've done is to sew along the short that the short edge uh, the long edges rather of these two borders <laughs> so what I'm going to do before I push those back is turn my iron on, if I can find the plug, where is she, there she is, and I'm going to snip those bits of lace off for a second, they don't need to be there, and if you cut yours to the size of say in the pattern you won't have anything overhanging, well very little anyway, because our panels are the same size. Or my panel is the same size if you wanted to do your panel a bit smaller you might have to adjust the size of your borders but um, you can go ahead and do that and I'm going to set the seam a second bring my mat in because this is my cushion here so I'll put that on the top bring my mat in set my seam I want a nice flat seam there because we're going to sew the borders on the other side and the borders on the, on the sides rather and, and they will go over those so I want a nice flat seam but I don't want to put huge amounts of heat onto my um, vintage lace I mean it's cotton so it shouldn't hurt but I don't want to risk it 
so just fold those back once you've set the seam and you've got the heat it's really nice to be able to do that with your fingers to be honest there we go there we go. Oh, thank you, Gemma, for putting Zippy Doodles up. I'm sure she'd be very grateful for that because, um, as I say, she's very talented. And um, now mine overlaps a little bit there. It's a tiny, tiny bit long on that side. So I'm just going to cut. It's only about a sixteenth of an inch, I think. So I'm just going to cut that off. There is a bin underneath, but I never used it. <laughs> and if I do, it doesn't. It doesn't go straight in the bin. So turn my iron off for a second and then our next job is to put the other borders on and these really should fit. So if you want to pop a pin in you can do. I just pop a pin at those um, seams there just to stop them riding up really I think. And you can see on the back that I've pressed the seams outwards towards the border. I've now got a bleeding thumb. Okay so those have gone out towards the border i'm not dying it's all right there we go so stitch stitch one border on on top of your lace so as you can see the lace is all sandwiched inside and then I'm going to go to the other side right sides down again but my fabric has not got a right and wrong side and sew down your side seams and then I'm hoping that we have the size that I've written in the pattern of the square here so once again set my seams turned my iron on again this needs to come closer to me a little bit doesn't it it goes out of shot i'm so sorry the camera just won't go down anymore i wish i could uh, get lots of fancy technology probably wouldn't do it very well anyway if i could so and then press your seams to the outside so they'll automatically go to the outside if you've got the border on the top when you fold back and again with this one okay so well that was easy wasn't it how long did that take us five ten minutes it could do with more pressing than that but i'm not going to spend huge amounts of time on it and i am just going to for my own benefit i'm just going to measure it up and yeah i'm happy with the size of that so that is correct okay so what i'm going to do now i'm going to layer it up with the rest of the layers for the front so this is my piece of calico you can use egyptian cotton you can use other fabrics but it's going inside your cushion so we're not going to see it it's just merely for the back um, and then I've got a piece of wadding they're bigger than my front as you can see because it just makes it a little bit easier I know you might think it's a bit of a waste but to me I'd rather have it easy and waste a little bit so I've done that side of that with the spray adhesive if you haven't got spray adhesive, you can always put a couple of tacks of sprayed the wrong thing. Always put a couple of tacks in there. I meant to spray the wadding. Don't spray your fabric like I just did. That was a bit silly. Um, but it's going inside anyway. So, so that's that layered up. And then we're going to put that in the center. Just make sure if you don't make yours much bigger your calico much bigger just make sure that this is covered by it at the back all right so press it down then do exactly the same as we did with the back give it a little spray and again at the front it's really important at this stage that everything is as flat as you can get it because we're going to stitch 
around the outside a bit like echo quilting I suppose um, and if it's all creased up it will stay creased up with that quilting okay so what I've said on the pattern is to draw a line a quarter of an inch outside here and then do some hand stitching what I am going to do I'm not going to draw a line because that will take up time. What I'm going to do is to just do a quarter of an inch of quilting. I've got some thread on that's exactly the same colour, so you might not see it very well. Um, but I'll bring it closer to the camera when I've done it. So we're going all the way around the outside of this. Now, if you want to do something different or nothing at all, then that's entirely up to you. But I quite like that. And I especially like it with the hand stitch, and I so enjoyed doing it. Let me show you the hand stitching. So the hand stitching is all around the outside. I'm trying to get it so that the light shows it. There you can see there that it's all around the outside of that um, kingfisher in the middle. But isn't this tree simply gorgeous? I just love it. So I'm going to bend you towards the machine again. Sorry, my hand is in the way. I do apologise. Can you see that or is it a bit too bendy? I'm so scared of the phone coming off. I'll wait until it's, uh, it's got to come towards me a bit, hasn't it? That's it. <laughs> I was just waiting for my, my, um, my mat to, uh, to catch up. So, so I've got a quarter of an inch foot and I'm going to go all the way around. So I'm going to line up this quarter of an inch here, uh, with that, uh, the edge of that lace and the seam. I've got my machine on three. You can put it on a little bit higher than that if you want to. But I quite like the length of three. It makes it nice and interesting without being too small. And then go over by a quarter of an inch. Give it a swivel. Along the other side. Pull it out so that you don't have any creases in as you're going along. Just gently. Love the hand stitchings. My stitch length has broken on my Benina. Oh, Rosina. Goodness me. But if you can't adjust your stitch length very much, then hand, quilt, hand stitching is the way to go. But you, whatever you do, you need to do it now rather than once you've put the cushion together. One more stitch always is. Something's gone on the floor. I haven't a clue what it was. Probably my steep, my seam ripper. So let's hope I don't need it. So when I come to the bottom, I'm just going to go one stitch over my previous stitch. There's no need for me to do any more because this is not holding anything together. Hello, somebody out there. Neil, would you shut my door? <laughs> He's not listening to me. Okay, let's just have a little look what, what we're doing then. Oop, I've moved the whole blooming thing now. Goodness me. Push that away a little bit. So here we have... You can just see the outline of, of that all the way around because I haven't pressed it either. So you can see it a little bit more than you would. So if we give this a little press, it's all sandwiched. So don't worry about my desk. <laughs> I do this far too often. There we go. The iron's not on, but it's still. And there's our front. So I'm going to put that towards to one side now while I just do the back. The back is so simple, you'd never believe it. So for the back, we have the calico again. I'm going to give it a little bit of a press, though, because it's so creased. Let's give it a little bit of a press. And I'll give it a little bit of a best press as well just to get those creases out so as I say nobody's going to see this so it really doesn't matter what you've got on the back it is just to hold everything in together and if you what I was going to say was before I was going to say that is that the 
pie crust cushion has not got an opening in it. So I have put on the pattern that it's not really suitable for children because it won't launder as well as um, a cushion with, um, you know, with a cover, if you like. This is a cushion rather than a cover. So what I was going to say then is that if you want to um, not, not to see your quilting on the back of this, you can put this on after you've done your quilting. Does that make sense? It just means that you can quilt through the two layers and then add this if you want to, or you can quilt through the two, because as you can see, that has come through on there. But it's going to be inside my cushion, so I'm happy with that. And it's neat enough anyway, it doesn't matter. So, having pressed that out, we'll put some spray on, and again, give that a good press with your hands so it's really nice and smooth and then it doesn't pull everything in and then on the other side we're going to put now this is bigger than you need as well it's bigger than the front but we're going to trim them all down so we'll add some spray on there There we go, turn it round, bring it back and add some spray on there. Doing it this way, half and half, stops you getting glue everywhere and stops the the glue getting on the front of the fabric, etc, etc. So try and do it half and half, it is very easy. I'm just going to give that a little press to get a few of those creases out as well. Don't lose my microphone. Don't want any technical hitches anymore. I can't bring the camera down anymore. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it needs to be close to me, doesn't it? The camera is... Oh, there we go. I've pushed it. How's that? Is that better? Only got half a picture. I'm so sorry. How's that? Is that better? There is a... There is a... Holding the, the camera on is a... Is a camera lock thing and then at the back of it it's not very good at the back of it there's like a pole so when you bring the camera down on the, the swivel it won't go any further because of the pole I'm sure a man must have designed it oh I didn't say that I honestly didn't say that but it wasn't somebody who uses a camera for sewing so it could have been a woman but I doubt it Okay, so what we're going to do now is, if you want to quilt, now is the time to do it, because you won't be able to afterwards, all right? So if you want to quilt, do it now. I'm going to put the cushion back up there for a minute because it's getting in my way a little bit. There we are. So now I'm going to trim all this excess off, because our next step is to put our is to put our um, gusset in. So, this is going to be trimmed off. All the measurements are in the pattern. And the outer, or that inner um, square actually, is a perfect shape can't find my, there it is, couldn't find my rotary cutter, so don't worry if yours is a slightly different shape, as long as it's not more than quarter of an inch out, it won't matter because it will be kept in the seams, so I've done that edge and then this edge so trim it to exactly what it says on the pattern if you can't trim it to exactly what it says on the pattern and it's smaller don't worry about it just make your back the same size nobody's going to wear this so it doesn't matter what size it is so that's the first one so doesn't it better when the when the bits of extra come off and it's all one nice size so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to fold this in half, only roughly, because there's nothing on it. So I'm going to fold it in half just to give it that 
to make sure that I've got everything on the back as much as anything else. Give it a press in the middle and we've kind of got a centre to it. So... I'm going to trim that off first. Went quiet then, I was concentrating. Can you see what I'm doing? Only just. There's nothing out of camera that's a secret. It's only me struggling to cut. There we go. So this corner here, we know is nice and square. So I'm going to turn it round and then I'll judge the size of it. I've got a lovely square ruler here, which is really handy. If you haven't got one, then um, I would recommend them. It's a lovely square ruler. So let's just make sure that that's the same size. Um, just let me double check because, yep, I don't want to get it wrong and then find I'm all out at the end. Goodness me, that wouldn't do, would it? So when you're cutting, double check before you cut it all off. And if it's a slightly bigger, then that's fine. If it's slightly smaller, then we can adjust the size of the cushion that goes in it. So those two actually match. Fabulous. Now then, what we're going to do is on the right side of this, we're either going to put a little notch or we're going to make a little mark. Mm -mm -mm scissors I was looking for. There it is. So I'm just going to cut a tiny little notch there. And that's the centre. So all I've done is fold it in half and cut a tiny little notch. You can hardly see it. I can hardly see it, but I know it's there. This is the gusset and I've had to um, sew this together because I didn't have a long enough piece but you can hardly see because it's stripy you can hardly see where it is so what I'm going to do now is to sew the gusset on the front piece so here's my little notch I'm going to leave three four five inches um, I've told you how much to cut for this on the pattern but if I were you, I'd cut longer anyway, if you can. And if you're going to join two pieces together because the piece that you've got is too short, then don't cut it off until until um, you've sorted it out. You've put it, sewn it on. So there's my centre. And I'm going to start stitching a couple of inches away from there. So I'm leaving three or four, five inches. And I'm going to sew from here. And I'll show you how to put the gusset on. OK, so we've got right sides together. There's our centre mark. I'm going to sew a couple of inches away from the centre mark. I'm going to start and I'm going to go all the way around and I'll show you what to do when we get to the corners. So put everything out of the way. So all the seam allowance is a quarter of an inch unless I say otherwise. And I am going to take that pin out. Don't panic. Now, what you could do if you wanted to um, is put your walking foot on. This will help to keep these layers together. I'm not going to because it just takes time for me because it's a separate one. I should have used my other machine and then it's all integrated. But, you know, hey ho. So we start stitching and we're going to do a little back stitch at the beginning. I'm going to turn my stitch down a little bit, but not much. And then we're going to stitch to within a quarter of an inch of this edge here. So we're going to stitch to a quarter of an inch of this edge here, okay? And then we're going to do a couple of back stitches and cut the threads, okay? So I've stitched to within a quarter of an inch here and I've done a few back stitches along here, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip into the gusset. 
So you can't see it very well, but I'm going to put a pin to show you where I've stopped stitching. Whoops, won't go in. That's where I've stopped stitching, and there's my quarter of an inch. So this bit of gusset here, I'm going to, going to go at a 45, de ooh, 45 degree angle towards that pin. Just a little snip, but don't snip your stitches and don't snip the fabric underneath. It's just your gusset you're going to snip. So I'm going to go towards those stitches. If you've got a pin there, you can't go over the stitches. So that's good. Good bit of safety. All right. So you can see there I've stitched from the outside of the corner to just about where the pin is and the stitches are there. So it's about a sixteenth of an inch away from that, um, that stitching. And then I'll bring it to me because it's easier. Actually, I won't. I'll take it to you so you can see. Um, I'm going to go now along the bottom edge and I'm going to pull very gently that so that you get a piece there. And this side is now lining up really well with that side. If you want to put a pin in or a clip, do that. And then we're going to start stitching right at the very top. Not from where we stopped, but right at the very top. Can you see that? Does that make sense? So we've snipped into the corner. We've bent the fabric around so that the raw edges are lining up. And we've got a bit of a, a pleat there, if you like. And we're going to start stitching right from the top here. Down that side. And we're going to stop again. What I'm going to do when I start stitching, so fold that back out of your way. You don't want to catch that in. Go right from the very edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I've done six stitches, six stitches, and I've gone reverse and back over again, just so that I um, really reinforce that corner. And then all we do is... Go down the seam and again we stop from this edge now all the way down to within a quarter of an inch so no more a couple of back stitches and then break our threads so we've come to a quarter of an inch I'm going to put a pin in again for you you don't have to do this I'm just showing you where I'm cutting because you can't see the stitches very well so I'm cutting into the gusset at a 45 degree angle like that from the corner of the fabric underneath towards the pin. Put that pin slightly further out than I wanted to so I can go another, another strand, another thread. And then we're going to bring now this piece around so that it lines up with the next side. I hope that's clear for you. I hope you can understand that. Okay, pull that out of the way and stitch from the very top. One, two, three, four, five, six stitches, six back and then carry on down. And like I say, you can um, pop pins in or use clips all the way down here if you want to if you're not confident of doing without then you do it your way and secure it as well as you can you could even use filters tape if you wanted to spend the time putting that on and that really would help secure it then so to within a quarter of an inch i've back stitched a little bit i'm going to pop a pin in to show you I'm going to snip at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to bring this edge here round to there. Do you know it's good that it's got four corners because I can repeat it for you and not slow us down. That's great, isn't it? Fold that bit back just out of the way. It doesn't have to be folded. Bring your edges together. Don't forget that if you don't quite get the hang of this, it doesn't matter because once these, once these seams have been, once this cushion has been turned through, these seams are going to be secured again with stitching around to make the high crust effect. So, you know, it's not difficult this, it's 
Easy peasy. And it's not a long project. So last one stitched to within a quarter of an inch. A couple of back stitches. 45 degree angle. And turn. And we're on the homeward stretch here. Look, so this is where we started. And we want to stop a kind of about here. So I'm only going to do a couple of inches sewing down here for now. And I'm going to stop about there. Do a back stitch and come off. So now this is where your little, I'm going to mark it for you. I think I've got a pencil here. I haven't got um So I've made a little mark on my notch there so that you can see where the middle is. Can you see that? I've made a little mark with pen mark. And where I started is just here and where I stopped is just here. So you can see we've got far too much here. What I'm going to do then is bring the top one down until we get to the to get to the that black mark. And I'm going to pin pin that on right on the black mark and fold it back. And then I'm going to make a finger press in there. And then I'm going to bring this one up right to it. Can you see what I'm doing there? I'll show you in a second. And make a finger press there. If I put pin in there, you'll be able to see. So I've brought this one right up to my little black mark. You can see the black mark under there. And I've brought it to there. Then I've folded it back and I've finger pressed. So that's on the black mark. If I take that up, you'll see the black mark there. Can you see? Can you see that? Okay. So that's that. And then I've brought this one up as well, folded it exactly where it is next, butting up to the top one. And then I'm going to take everything out and I'm going to put those two fold marks together. You can see on the inside of your fabric more than you can on the outside. Now if you're finding it difficult then just mark it with a pen. That's not a problem. Let me just have a quick look in the light to see if I can put that in the right place. Whoops, there you go. My hands are in the way but I'm sorry about that but I'll show it to you now. So I'm going to put those two fold marks or pen mark if you want to make a pen mark together and put pin in and you're best to put a pin in that way or this way because what we're going to do now is to sew those two pieces of fabric together to make sure the edges butt up with each other and we're going to sew down that fold mark so if you're not confident to do that without marking it with pen then that's fine my um my ticking as well this fabric here has got um stripes in it as you know so it helps me to be able to see um to, to sew straight which is great pop my pin out so I've sewn across there um sorry i lost my foot then <laughs> Not my foot, but the foot. Um, you can't see. Oh, so sorry. Can you see now? Can I can I tell you what I did? So I brought this up to the fold mark or the centre mark, folded it back. Then I brought this one up to the centre mark and folded it back. Make a an ink mark or a or a fold mark and put some pins in and then I've stitched the two gusset pieces together okay I'll be able to show you again on I won't be able to show you again but I'll be able to um, show you now what's what the the result is so we've got long pieces of gusset here and then we've got a gap here and what we want to do is to just check that this the length of the gusset is the same length of that so put them together it just means that if it's not, you can undo that row of stitching and start again. So put them together and pin. Now I do use pins here. And it's the perfect fit. 
if you've got them butted up and you sew on your on your fold then you will have the perfect fit so i'm going to trim this down to i don't know a quarter of an inch three eighths of an inch seam allowance and then give that i'd normally press it with my iron but by the time i wait for it to to warm up i could have done it okay so I've pinned that together now so I know that's the right size. Keep your pins in until the last minute so that you don't get any creases or anything in it. And we're just going to sew the remainder of that gusset onto the front piece. A little back stitch. And there we have it. So you can see how that's gone in. It's gone in perfectly. So we've got our gusset all sewn in and this, the seam is on the right hand side doesn't matter where the seam is really but i just like it on the side because then you can't see it when you look directly at the cushion but with the sticking you can hardly tell anyway okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to put a mark in the center of the the back this is our back and we're going to mark it in the center like we did before with a little notch tiniest little notch so I was going to tell you a story I'm going to tell you a story about this it's on the floor now it's fallen on the floor off the thing on, under my desk so this is my cushion okay now it looks like an ordinary cushion doesn't it it is an ordinary cushion there's nothing magical about it at all I, I could not get at short notice the size cushion that I needed to do this tonight for you. So where's my little notch? There it is. So I had to go uh, to my local um, store and get, because I wanted a feather cushion, because it is much easier to get in. I had to go and get a cushion. And uh, so I had to buy a bigger one. <laughs> and so what happened? I had to make it smaller and the whole place is covered with feathers. Well, you'd know that, wouldn't you? I actually took the feathers out in the garden, but when I came back in, it all blew back in, and so the whole place downstairs is covered in feathers. And up here, I've brought some in on my clothes as well. So, <laughs> well, there you go. Turn that back to, wee bit back to your right. Is that, is that better? I can't really tell which is my right. That's my right, so probably. Is that there? Is that better? <laughs> I have to go left if it's the right. Yeah, there we go. So right sides together. So lining, um, so linen, and there's the lining on the outside. And we want to put the notch we just made and butt it up to the seam. And then we know that that's in the center. Okay. Um, and then, if you wanted to measure these and put a little mark in the centre, then do so. I'm just going to eyeball it and put a tiny little mark in the centre. And the centre there as well. And the centre around here. Only so, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do too much to it. Um, I'm going to eyeball the centre of these as well. I'm not going to do too much to it because it does come right on its own, funnily enough. So don't be too hung up about it. And if it doesn't quite come right on its own, you can ease it. All right. So that's what I'm going to aim for, but I'm not going to worry if it doesn't happen. Exactly. So I'm going to start stitching from um, my gap. This is my bottom half, so I'm going to put a couple of a uh, couple of pins in here because we need to leave a very decent turning gap, not turning gap, stuffing gap, uh, cushion cap, whatever you call it, gap to get your your cushion in. I suppose that is a stuffing gap, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to start anywhere about here because we don't have to join our ticking now so i'm going to start sewing from here i'm going to do the same thing again it's a little bit more tricky but i'm going to sew to within a quarter of an inch 
and what I might do is start from here actually start from where I want the uh, the opening to be at the bottom best to be at the bottom and then you don't see it because it's on the back and you can't see the, the, the back at the cushion and in fact my turning gap is on the bottom and you can hardly tell okay and I'm going to go from the turning gap I think that's probably it's about at least six inches so leave at least six inches on your turning gap and then you're going to have to manipulate your fabric so that your raw edges are together so this this gusset piece is straight can you see that I want that straight I don't want it curling round I want to hold it straight if you want to put pins in do that but I find them more of a hindrance so start with a back stitch stitch to within a quarter of an inch a couple of back stitches and um, cut your threads now your gusset is underneath but it's still exactly the same we're going to go at a, a 45 degree angle towards that stitching but it's underneath so I'm just going to snip there and then you'll see that as this comes round then it will line up on the other side okay it's not easy to see so you have to make sure that you're in the right place but start off your stitching and then you can make sure you're in the right place okay so we're going to go straight down this side do exactly the same thing so pull your manipulate your gusset until it comes nice and straight is everybody okay <laughs> thank you very much miss lizzie and jackie somebody asking questions and uh, the girls being helpful so to within a quarter of an inch take that back hold that out of the way and snip in 45 degree angle bring that around you can tell if you're on the right track because this is this is in front of this okay so don't worry about it too much because we're going to have a look before we get to the end anyway just to make sure we're not twisted or anything it's a little bit it's a little bit daunting or it can be but just go for it all the way down this side we've got seven minutes I wonder if we'll do it <laughs> we'll give it a go even out your ticking take your scissors 45 degree angle come around your corner I'm going to put a pin there because for a second I'm just going to now you see this is not quite central but we can ease this along this side so that's why I came out a little bit because everything moves if I'd have used my my um, walking foot it might have been better so that's a good tip is if you've got a walking foot use your walking foot take that pin out of there because we're going down to this corner and we're just going round by about an inch okay so ease it in a little bit if it needs to be and then the last quarter of an inch turn it's 
not quite lining up, but it doesn't matter because we can trim that in a few minutes. The calico has moved along with the wadding. Okay. So I'm going to do that again because that hasn't caught very well. More haste, less speed. I'll find my quick and tip. I'll have another one. I bought several of these the other week because they're all over the place. I can never find one. I didn't pull the calico so you can see what I didn't pull the linen up far enough so you can see what I'm talking about with the um, with it moving let's trim that off a little bit and that's it and then I can bring it up properly and stitch again oh, okay sorry if you didn't see that but it was just me fiddling about that's better straight now so we've got our turning gap there, okay, and our cushion is nice and straight. So now what we're going to do is turn it in the right way. Push the corners out nicely. We need these corners to push well out because of stitching. So I'll be able to do a little bit of stitching, but probably only the one side, and then I'll finish it off and post a picture to show you. You'll get the idea if I'm just going to do the one side. We might be a couple of minutes over there now, because it will take me half an hour to get the cushion in. <laughs> no, it won't. No. But I do have to sort now. Top tip for your cushion. Can you see all the feathers? It's to roll it up. That's why you need a big turning gap. Don't worry if your turning gap comes open a little bit. We can always re -sew. And the cushion looks ever so big, doesn't it? But don't forget we've got the gusset to fill with this cushion as well. It would probably be too big for this, but it's because I had to make it smaller and I probably haven't made it small enough. But for the other one, it was the right size, so you know that it's, it's the right size. So be gentle with the fabric, but you don't have to be gentle with the cushion. Just give it a good old squeeze in there. And then if I can find it, I might glue my cushion together. If not, I'll forget the turning gap. And I'll do that later. There we are. So now all we need to do is manipulate it inside. It is a tight squeeze, but it needs to be puffy. And it needs to be full, or otherwise your your pie crust won't work. Okay. So there it goes. Manipulate it over. And then what we will do with this is to close that by hand. I've still got some manipulation of that cushion to go yet. Just take your time with it. And it will go into all the corners, front and back ones. It's hot work, this. It's hot work. So then what I'm going to do, and all I'm going to do is one line, because you'll need to give these seams a bit of a press, and then put some clips along them. You can see that the cushion hasn't quite filled that yet, but don't worry about that. Squeeze those um, two corners together, so if I do it the right way for you, there is the outside, there is the gusset, and going to squeeze them together and I'm going to put a couple of clips on because I haven't um, pressed it and I'll just sew along the top here so you've got the idea so you've got the idea so I'm just going to sew from a quarter of an inch from this end so where you've got your corner just a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch that end so I'm just going to sew from here to here Alright, so I've put some 
clips on and just sewing from a quarter of an inch from there to there okay and you'll need to take your time on this because it is quite bulky but if you hold the cushion up um, you will be able to do it it might not be the best sewing you've ever seen today because obviously I'm rushing it now to get you off to your supper so can you see that about a quarter of an inch from the edge so if you keep this part of the cushion close up I know you can't see very much if I just pull it round there can you see that can you see yeah I'm sorry it's not awfully clear for you It's not going to be the most perfect of pie crusts. In fact, it's not the perfect pie crust at all because that's gone off because my clip came off. Well, anyway, you get the gist. I've not pushed it back. If you want to tack this first, you can. Let's try another side. Let's try another side and you'll get the idea. The reason why you only go from a quarter of an inch to a quarter of an inch is so that you get those corners nice and nice and rounded. You know, you don't want to sew around those corners because they'll stick up. So, but you do want, that's why you have to um, press your seams because you do want the crust to sit right on the top of those two seams, not kind of halfway like mine just half. It's not easy. Push your cushion away because we can sort that out later. There we go. Push your cushion away. Push the gusset underneath. Fingers crossed that this one will go a little bit easier. Don't think that this is difficult, it's just fiddly. And I so enjoyed hand snitching it far more than I did machine stitching it. So there's our there's our pie crust done on the one side. So you see, that's how we want it to stand, and we want those seams to be on the top. This has gone very off at this stage, but I can take that out and finish it off. I will finish it off on the machine for you so you can see what it's like um, finished off on the machine. I'm sorry, but this cushion is just so big. So I will finish it off. But you see what I mean? It's gone. It's gone so that the seam is not on the edge here. It's gone in there. That's because I didn't pull it properly. Sometimes my fingers won't work that well and make sure that you've you've understood what the problem was that isn't on the top all right so i'm going to take that out and do it again but this one here sits right on the top can you see that okay so that's what we're aiming for and then when we come to the back we'll need to do our turning gap first and once we've done the turning gap you won't even see the turning gap but we need to sew around that edge as well to make sure that we've got those two sticky outfits there okay now i'm sorry that couldn't finish but it would take me another 20 minutes to finish it off i expect um if i was going to do it tidily just so quarter of an inch in from there to there from there to there from there to there there to there and on the back and you're sorted and it is very puffy but yours will probably be a little bit less puffy because you'll have the right size. There's our cushion. There's our pie crust on that side, which looks great. So we'll just show you that side. We won't show you the top. <laughs> just show you that side. And I'll unpick that and I'll start getting you see, Sometimes we all have to unpick. So, and there we go. Give your cushion a good old squish. 
and it will be lovely. And once somebody's sat next to it, they'll love it anyway. So I hope you like it. I hope you um, have a go at making it. And um, I will see you in a couple of weeks' time with another Making It Monday. Next week, it's Lizzie's turn with a lovely project for Making It Monday next Monday. In between time, we have the um, members page um, Thursday night special that we always have. So if you're not a member and you don't know what I'm talking about, head over to the website and have a look at sign up for gold and platinum and it'll tell you all about membership and what you need to do and all that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, and then you can come and join us on a Thursday night and lots of things in between. So I hope you've enjoyed it, even though it's been a bit disjointed and we haven't finished, but I will finish it and I will post it. And if you make yours and finish it, please post it too, because we'd love to see them. And I will see you very soon. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye bye for now. Bye.